Hello, my name is Mesut Turkal. I'm a software quality assurance engineer. And as most of my colleagues, test automation is a very important part of my daily tasks. Because nowadays we are not having big releases or seasonal releases anymore, but almost every day we are pushing some new commits and we are implementing some new features to the working product in the production environment. But even if not implementing new features, sometimes we are changing or updating the behaviors on the existing features, which means we are doing the continuous delivery and continuous integration. And accordingly, of course, this means we have to do the continuous testing as well, because we have to ensure that these frequent updates or uh, frequent development activities do not, breaking, do not break the working functionality. So we have to do continuously the testing and verification and validation activities. And in this way, we can continuously ensure the quality and improve the confidence in our team to deliver the best product to the, uh, our customers. So in these terms, test automation is very important because if uh, we have only manual testing activities, of course, with solely manual testing efforts, it is not possible to catch up all the verification activities because there is a huge and comprehensive verification scope. So doing this frequently almost every day with manual efforts, it, it will be not possible to catch up with, uh, to cover all the scope with limited resources in a limited time. So if we have already some implemented test code or the automated test executions, it will be much more easy to cover with a, a much more fast and uh, reliable uh, test execution activities. But in these terms, reliability and robustness or even stability is very important. So even if we implement test cases, are we having reliable results from these test cases? Or even if we automate all the test cases we already designed, it means that, does it mean that we are already catching all the possible or potential vulnerabilities or bugs? So we in the session, we will a little bit talk about the potential risks or difficulties or drawbacks or test automation challenges. And of course, if we are talking about challenges or problems, of course, we will talk about the solutions and some proposals to cope with this kind of challenges as well. So let's get started. As we uh, briefly discussed, test automation has great advantages and benefits. First of all, it saves time. Because while we are doing the test automation or executing the test cases manually, sometimes it may take hours or even days. But while doing the same thing with an automated run, we can execute several uh, scripts to fasten the execution, or even we can create some virtual machines to divide the whole suite into different subsets, and we can already utilize the parallel runs to reduce the total execution duration. And not only the execution duration, but also we can improve the coverage. For example, we can perform the same test scenario by providing different data inputs. So we can uh, perform the data-driven testing to apply not only the positive scenarios, but also the negative test cases by providing or uh, inputting some different negative uh, data values or with some different data formats. So all this means we can already eliminate uh, some human effort and we can reduce the manual effort. But beyond that, there are some scenarios in which we cannot do with only manual testing. For example, when we try to do uh, the load testing or performance testing, we have to uh, send lots of different concurrent requests. So we have to create several requests which will be sent to the servers and we will be checking the responses or the responsiveness of the servers. So for this purpose, of course, we cannot collect a lot of people who will try to send different requests at the same time but instead we can just create the, those requests on our uh, machines and resources and then we can do these kind of load testing activities. So all these different aspects are great benefits and advantages which we can utilize by performing the test automation. But of course there is a but side of all these uh, advantages and of course there are some difficulties that we have to cope with. So let's start to discuss them one by one. The first difficulty that we have to cope with is the frequent updates or change because since we are working in agile environments, it is very likely to see some updated behaviors. Initially, we design our features in a way, but after going to the customers or the end users, after getting some feedback from them, sometimes we update some changes or updates and we try to improve the usability or the, even the functionality of some features. So it means that even if we implement the test scenarios to cover these use cases once, 
it doesn't mean that we can execute them forever without any maintenance so sometimes we have to continuously maintain and pay attention to these test cases because otherwise as we can see in the famous cartoon on this slide sometimes the customer expectation is totally different than what we developed or design or provide uh, to the customers or the end users so this is the importance or the uh, proposal to cope with the frequent updates or challenges if we do the continuous maintenance if we always try to sync our test cases to the uh, design or the implementation of the features then uh, we can keep our test cases up to date which is co uh, covering the correct scope because otherwise maybe what we will cover will be totally different than the expectation uh, from the customers or the end users this is one aspect of the agile practices the second one is the second dimension is in agile practices in uh, after every sprint we expect a working product which is the minimum viable uh, minimum uh, shippable product so we have a very limited time maybe two weeks three weeks but after that we expect uh, at least a working functionality or a feature which means we have a very limited time with the limited resources we have to complete our testing activities but to be able to complete all these testing efforts of course we need to start in the same time with the development activities because otherwise it will be too late we will be very limited time to complete our verification activities so what we can do is this time the solution is of course encouraging the early QA involvement because if the team is not informing the QA members about the development activities, they will not be aware of what is being implemented and they cannot start their preparations in the same time with the development activities. But otherwise, if we have a good communication channel and everyone is synced with the correct quality mindset, then we will be performing a holistic team approach. And with the early QA involvement, we will be already discussing about the testability of features even when we just start the design or the uh, requirement analysis of all these features this is the importance of early QA involvement in addition to those changes or updates to the working functionalities or the features sometimes even the, uh, within the specific feature or use case we may have some instabilities for example if we have a B testing activities we deploy different instances this is why I have a cute canary in the slide so we may have canary deployments uh, including different instances returning different results so sometimes uh, the results coming from different instances will not uh, match to our expected conditions because in these cases we won't be able to know which instance or which uh, version we will hit uh, during our execution in advance so sometimes it will be really difficult to assert the expected conditions so these kind of activities make test automation difficult uh, for us to uh, ensure the stability or the reliability but even regardless of these a b testing activities sometimes there may be some scripts or uh, some algorithms running in our services or in the products making again automation difficult and the reliability very difficult especially do, uh, while doing the front-end automation sometimes there are lots of different scripts on the web pages so to do the uh, interactions to simulate those kind of human interactions uh, first of all we have to locate the elements which we want to interact with and then we perform our interactions but uh, doing this uh, element locations on the web pages are sometimes a little bit tricky and even if after we find them we locate them if there are some scripts running on the web page or even uh, after the page is loaded or refreshed then sometimes the uh, elements are already gone so those elements that we already found are already detached from the page and we have to find it again we have to locate it again when we run the next line or the next uh, uh, step in our test scenario the element is already gone and we cannot proceed with our next steps so these kind of instabilities are uh, some tricky uh, things that we have to cope with during our executions so what we can do is of course we can, uh, we try to uh, improve the reliability or the stability of our test uh, automated test execution there are lots of different ways for example rather than uh, using the traditional locators we can provide some uh, data test ids or some more reliable locators to our execution and even if those element locators are changed or updated because all the uh, front-end automation engineers know this very well sometimes the developers change the page layout frequently so uh, 
this means the locators will be changed because sometimes the classes or different attributes are changing but if we use some unique ids even if the page layout is changed then the, we can still use the unique id it will remain same so this will already improve our uh, test reliability so uh, even for the instabilities coming from the or resulting from the product aspects we can still improve our test reliability and uh, cope with these kind of challenges and there may be some different difficulties namely uh, testability some of the features are not uh, easy to test because if we are especially if we are uh, testing a subsystem in the whole system and there are some different interactions and integrations to the other subsystems and sometimes we don't have access to those uh, other parts of the whole system for example let's assume a feature which is uh, syncing our subsystem which is under test after a data is created on the other part of a system so when a data or an instance is created in the other subsystem our uh, subsystem which is under test should sync itself by pulling the uh, newly created object but in this case if we don't have access to create an object in the other subsystems then how can we test this scenario so uh, we have to simulate or trigger this scenario to be able to check if the communication is done or the whole interaction is done properly first of all we have to create the data but if we don't have access or right to do that then we will be having some testability issues we will not be able to trigger this condition because uh, we will not be able to create the relative or relevant uh, instances on the other subsystems so what we can do is of course we can utilize some mocks or we can develop some uh, other subsystems uh, which is faking as the modules which our uh, system under test is communicating with but what one initiative we can do in this in that regard is we can communicate to the development teams and we can try to find ways to improve the testability for example if we need some public apis or other interfaces by which we can create some instances just for testing purposes because we know that they will not be used in the real uh, production environment but just for testing purposes to be able to trigger the condition that we need to perform this scenario we can request some additional interfaces from them and then after uh, with the help of development teams if we have those interfaces through which we can uh, trigger our expected conditions we will be able to cover these testability issues and one more thing which may a little bit make things difficult for us is the hardware modules because sometimes to uh, perform or verify and validate the interactions uh, which is done with the hardware modules we have to simulate those kind of messages or the protocols which is uh, communicating the hardware modules with the software algorithms that we have in our system for example uh, if we have some uh, devices iot devices sensors or robots or some other hardware modules or components there will be some signals or messages coming through these hardware modules but while we are doing the test automation how can we automate these scenarios sometimes we need some simulation environments and we have to fake all these uh, protocols or the messages coming from those hardware modules or the sensors we have to fake like or pretend like those hardware modules are uh, somehow uh, triggered and sending the relative message uh, to be able to perform or cover the next uh, test steps not only the hardware modules but also the ai component is very likely to be seen in our products nowadays because we know that today ai or the machine learning algorithms is a very important part of our daily life so which means when we are developing some uh, products or the features or the functionalities to our customers it is very likely to include some machine learning algorithms to provide them the best user experiences so when we are deploying or delivering our products how can we ensure the performance of this kind of ml or ai components involved in our products so of course there are lots of different ways to improve the performance while developing the algorithm itself but speaking in terms of the functional test automation point of view how can we ensure the best performance coming from these ai modules so it is a little bit tricky and what we can do is maybe we can uh, perform several uh, ex experiments and we can do lots of different benchmark studies but just from functional test automation point of view it is almost impossible to perform or ensure the best performance of 
uh, this AI components. For example, on this slide, I have an uh, example uh, in which there is a web page uh, where you can do several queries and you can collect the results coming from the backend services and uh, list them on the web pages. Uh, you can show them uh, on this web page. But there is a feature in which uh, you are provided to do an ordering. You can order all the results according to their uh, published date or their relevance to the performed query. But how can we ensure about the uh, relevance if the results shown on the page are really relevant uh, to the query? So this is a little bit uh, subjective and we can do lots of different experiments to uh, catch the best user experience. Otherwise, just uh, for functional testing purposes, we cannot do and we cannot cover the whole aspects of the quality of this uh, feature with the automated test scenarios. So this means we should always support our test automation activities with some manual activities and with some other studies like benchmarking studies or some experiments involved with uh, the user uh, or the uh, end client's uh, involvement. And a little bit related to this issue, there is a non-functional aspect of the quality in our product that we are delivering or providing to our customers. It's not only functionality, but there are lots of different aspects of the quality. For example, performance, how responsive our services are, even when under load, the, how is the performance of our services, or even the usability, how easily the end users can use our services. This is just the user experience and the uh, usability aspect of quality. And of course, this, these, all these aspects and dimensions are very important. Not only the functionality, but also all these other aspects of the quality are very important. So how can we ensure with the uh, test automation? Of course, it is not uh, possible to cover all these aspects, but uh, we can support uh, on top of all uh, our test automation activities, we can do several studies, sometimes manual testing activities, sometimes exploratory testing activities, which means test automation will never enable us to provide a bug-free software. Or even the manual testing activities will never enable us to deliver a bug-free software because bug-free software is not possible. And even a testing is not possible. So we will always have some issues or always have some bugs. But of course, the priority of the severity of them are very important. So the important thing is try to minimize those kind of issues as much as possible. Try to reduce the escape bugs as much as possible. So on top of the test automation activities, the manual testing is very important. But uh, without test automation, we cannot cover uh, the in, uh, scope which is sufficient to uh, deliver uh, our products with a certain quality. So test automation is very important as the baseline. But on top of that, we should never ignore the manual testing activities. Recently, as an initiative in our team, we performed a bug bash in which uh, everyone in the team tried to use the products. So it was a kind of a dog fooding activity. And we tried to find the issues, uh, all kind of the functionality and the usability issues. And we found uh, several issues. So we were questioning in the team, if so, if this is the case, what are the automated test cases are uh, covering? What are they finding? But it doesn't mean that they don't find any issues. So we already found several issues uh, reported by the automated test cases. But those were the issues already remaining from the test automation activities. They were, they were still a lot of issues which can be fixed or even improved uh, in the product. So both the test automation and the manual testing activities uh, are very important in these terms. And there will be still a lot of issues which can be improved. So what we can do is maybe we can do uh, some chaos testing activities to test if something unexpected happens in some parts of the system. If some parts uh, are going down, what will be the other parts or the other systems will be uh, reacting to this unexpected situation? What kind of behaviors we should expect? Uh, expect? They will uh, also go down or somehow they can manage these kind of uh, unexpected situations and when the other parts of the system are covered they will be still uh, performing and uh, responding, uh, responding uh, to the uh, customer or the end user request so this kind of chaos testing activities we can do to uh, be able to perform uh, the product responses even in the uh, worst cases 
So after these kind of difficulties stemming from the product or the way of working uh, of the features or the functionalities, of course, we can talk about some difficulties regarding the implementation itself. On this slide, I have an example showing a setup to test the account or tenant creation feature. And one requirement of the feature was after a tenant was created, the user of this tenant should be notified via an email. And the difficulty in this uh, scenario was uh, after each time we execute this test scenario, we should go to the email account and we, we should log in with the correct credentials and we should verify that the email was there with the relevant subject and the correct uh, context. But uh, creating unique email IDs after each run and managing all the credentials was uh, super difficult. So what we did is we set up an email relay which was capturing the email to be sent to an email address which is heard of format and forwarding them to one uh, other email address. So in this way, whenever an email is prepared to be sent to an email address, which is uh, fitting to a certain format, uh, it was capturing this and forwarding to an uh, other u uh, email address, which was managed by us. So what we were doing is, each time we execute this scenario, we were going to the email address, which uh, was managed in the test environment, and by utilizing this email relay, we were able to uh, manage only one uh, set of credentials going to one unique uh, email address. And instead of creating a lot of several uh, unique email addresses with the, uh, credential, the uh, unique credentials, which were very difficult to manage, uh, we could uh, perform this scenario with the minimized effort. But of course, preparing this environment and utilizing these servers to prepare the email relay itself was very difficult. So of course we had to put some effort and we of course should spend some time to prepare this uh, test environment. But not only the test environment, sometimes the test code itself is difficult to maintain or difficult to implement. Because we, as we already discussed about the front-end automation, sometimes the element locators are tricky uh, to figure out, but even sometimes the normal algorithms to test the uh, uh, backend services like uh, sending the responses, preparing the uh, correct uh, format request, or even parsing the responses. Sometimes implementing the test code is challenging. So we have to cope with uh, this kind of uh, difficulties and we have to improve the ease of coding in our test automation framework. And not only the implementation, but also the maintenance is very important. And one aspect of the maintenance is the execution durations. So if our test executions are taking too much time, it means sometimes the features to be deployed are waiting for the test results. Because as we discussed in the beginning, normally we want to integrate our test executions into our pipelines to ensure that the frequent updates or changes do not break into working functionality. But each time, after each commit, uh, after each merge request, if we are running test cases and if they are waiting uh, or taking too much time, then after some time, the team members will start to complain. I'm raising an MR and I'm uh, waiting for hours to uh, commit uh, or uh, to merge uh, my commits to uh, my uh, updates. And test cases are really blocking our development activities. To avoid these kind of situations, we can try to reduce the execution time as much as possible. As we already discussed previously, we can uh, introduce the parallel executions, but even within the certain test scenarios, we can uh, analyze which steps or which operations are taking too much time, and we can try to find out the root causes. And if there are some dummy ways or there are any other steps, uh, redundant steps, which can be eliminated to cover the same scope, then we can already reduce them, uh, eliminate them, and reduce the total uh, execution durations. And uh, one more aspect which will help us to improve the maintainability of test code to uh, implement the next test cases in a way faster or easier way is removing the duplications. If we already introduce some helper classes which are providing some methods duplicated uh, in lots of different test scenarios, uh, then whenever we need to implement uh, such a scenario, we will be already ha having the chance to call these methods implemented in the uh, those helper classes, and it will already help us to 
improve the ease of coding and not only the ease of coding but it will help us to remove the duplication because instead of having this kind of helper classes in which the repeated steps are implemented if we implement these steps in each test case separately then what will we do when a fix is updated or uh, uh, needed we have to update uh, one step uh, repeatedly used in lots of different test cases or test spec files we will go to each spec file and we will fix this uh, problem in each of them separately but instead if we already have the unique uh, point of source then we will be uh, having the chance to apply our fix to a single point another important aspect of the maintenance stage of the software testing lifecycle is managing the bugs so of course when we are doing the test automation or the automated test executions some test cases may fail and we have to understand the root causes sometimes they may be false alarms but sometimes they may be the real bugs stemming from the product so we should find the root cause and we have to report our bugs but of course in these cases the evidence collection is very important because we have to provide as much as possible information to our reports and of course it is very important to reproduce the bugs because if that is not the case somehow if test cases fail on the executed runs and we don't know what is going on or what happened during those executions and we are not able to reproduce then uh, it will not be a valid report because uh, we have to provide all the details which will support the fixed activities and uh, in this case we can fix the issues uh, in the product but in these terms of course evidence collection and during our executed runs providing the information all the possible information including the screenshots or even maybe the video of the execution will help us a lot to understand the issue or even apply the fix to these kind of issues so uh, let's a little bit wrap up what we have discussed uh, in terms of the test automation challenges and the proposals to cope with these kind of challenges so we discussed first of all we have to cope with this uh, frequent updates because once the tests are implemented it doesn't mean that we can execute them forever without paying uh, them paying attention to them anymore so what we should do is to cope with the uh, agile limited time and limited resources to have the uh, minimum viable product in a very limited time we have to encourage the early QA involvement and to cope with frequent updates to be able to cover the correct scope we have to continuously maintain our test cases and do the continuous maintenance the next thing was the instabilities sometimes stemming from a b testing activities or sometimes stemming from some scripts or the nature of working in our product so we have to improve the test robustness in lots of different ways we have to improve to be uh, ready for uh, different uh, actual results and to be able to cover them uh, properly and the next thing was different uh, testability issues what we can do is we can collaborate with the development teams and we can try to find different ways to improve the testability and we may have uh, hardware dependencies or similarly we may have some ai components in the products that we are developing so what we can do is we can prepare several simulation environments and not only the test automation but also we can do the manual testing activities maybe some experiments or exploratory testing activities to understand they are uh, performing with a good performance and uh, of course the functionality is not the only aspect of the quality that we are trying to ensure but also the usability performance responsiveness and maintainability recoverability all these kind of non-functional aspects are also very important so we can do lots of different non-functional tests as well especially chaos testing will help us to ensure the responsiveness of the uh, product even in the worst cases when some parts of the product are down and one more aspect or the difficulty we have to cope with was the implementation itself sometimes we have to set up some test harness or test environment and sometimes the implementation itself can be tricky and uh, in addition to implementation the maintenance the reproduction of the bugs or the test execution durations are all uh, related difficulties or the challenges that we can improve so what we can do is we can try to reduce duplication eliminate the duplication and we can 
improve or encourage reusability in our test automation frameworks. So we can categorize these kind of difficulties. Uh, first of all, the frequent updates and the instabilities are the reasons stemming from the nature of the product or our implementation methods like uh, agile methodologies or uh, other uh, working principles. And the second category can be uh, considered as the testability or the components of the product. And thirdly, we can talk about the non-functional aspects and then we can talk about the implementation, maintenance or execution related difficulties. So uh, we talked about lots of different difficulties, but of course, when there is a difficulty or there is a problem, of course, it means there should be some solutions which will help us to ease or uh, solve these kind of problems. So uh, the uh, call for action should be you should list your problems or the difficulties in the test automation framework because there is always something to improve. There should be always some improvement rooms and please uh, try to fix them or uh, try a lot of uh, things to improve them and solve them as much as possible and adapt your solutions in the test automation frameworks. Thanks for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference.